I finally got around to playing The Outer Wilds. It was a game I was tracking and had on my list, but after a pretty strong showing in the Game of the Year discussions at the end of 2019, it prompted me to sit down and finally play it. And oh, what a treat. Maybe you were thinking about buying The Outer Wilds, or maybe you just want a super lightweight look at whether it's worth purchasing. Well, this is where you should be. Here's a list of things I'll cover super quickly to help you get a general idea about the game. First up, genre competitor comparison. Usually I start reviews of this format with a good look at the genre of the game and some comparable games that inform or compete with what I'm reviewing. For The Outer Wilds, this is pretty tough because I genuinely think that while many of the concepts in it have been done before, it's a very unique take that carves out a space all of its own. I could draw comparisons to some of the games that have time loop mechanics like Majora's Mask, it's a first person shooter, first person ship flying game, but in the same way that like Portal is a first person shooter, not really, but yeah, the camera works like that, but it just kind of acts as a familiar method for serving the mechanics of the game. So let's skip straight to the game loop. And in this case, loop really is the key word of that statement. The core game loop. Let's handle this in two parts, the setup and the actual loop. For the setup, in the Outer Wilds, you are an eager astronaut that is about to embark on their first voyage into the solar system. You wake up on your little planet of Timber Hearth and need to go to the observatory to get the launch codes that will let you get out there and explore your star system by taking off in your ship. On the way to the observatory, you can talk to a bunch of your fellow Hearthians and they will teach you different mechanics of the game by explaining the weird and wonderful things that litter the village. These tutorials are completely optional. You can run past them and just grab the codes. This fits with the overall theme of exploration the game is going for, but honestly, take a half an hour and do them. You will set yourself up for a much better launch into the Outer Wilds. Once you get the launch codes, you can finally leave the planet in your stylized wooden spaceship. The sky is the limit. You can now fly your spaceship anywhere you want, land on any planet and use all the tools you hopefully learned about. The twist of the game happens 22 minutes after getting the codes, when the sun suddenly goes supernova and explodes, destroying everything in the system. You see this rewind sequence of your playthrough flash before you in reverse, and then you wake up back on Timber Hearth, next to the familiar campfire where you began the game. This will now become a very familiar scene. The star system will now continue to run on the loop of you waking up and 22 minutes later, the sun exploding over and over. Now you might be thinking, cool, but what do I do? What's the goal? This is where the game leans heavily into the theme of exploration and learning. It never gives you a goal. You are just supposed to be driven by the curiosity to go out and discover what there is to discover. The game tries to influence and pique your curiosity by mentioning the other planets to you, how there are other space explorers on each of these planets, and eventually you will learn about the former inhabitants of the star system, the Nomai. The Nomai are a spacefaring race that have been gone from the solar system for a long time. Their ruins can be found all over the various planets. And off you go. The goal most people will likely formulate is, let's find out why the sun is exploding. From here, it gets hard because the more I tell you, the more I will be taking away from the gameplay. The game is literally about going out there and finding what there is to find. Through this action, you will learn about the Nomai, why they aren't in the solar system anymore, and obviously the details surrounding why you keep waking up every 22 minute cycle back where you started. The actual game loop. So depending on what you decide your goal is, the remainder of the time will consist of waking up, going to explore something, and then being caught in the sun's explosion. There are many places to explore in the outer wilds though, and they are all very different. You receive information by finding these stone tablets and translating the ancient Nomai writing. The writing will talk of the time when the Nomai inhabited the system. These writings will take you on a crisscrossing quest to find out exactly what is going on. You might read a tablet on one planet that talks about the building on the south pole of another planet. So the next loop, you might decide to go to the south pole of that planet to investigate the building. This then gives you another thread of information to follow that will either shed some light on the story or lead you somewhere else. You repeat this over and over until you have the all important aha moment when it all clicks together and you know what you are supposed to do. Then you can progress to the end game. 
Side note, talking to Gabbro on Giants Deep will eventually unlock meditating, which will allow you to reset the loop from the start menu, which is super helpful. So remember that. Key standout features. So we are across what we do most of the game. Explore. What are the standout features that make this experience unique? The spaces. The soul system of this game is amazing. Just flying around in your little ship gives this sense of awe. The solar system is beautiful in its own way. At a macro level, the solar system is on this 22 minute loop. Things reliably happen at different times during the loop, and this plays into the design. For example, the comet that is circling the sun, called the interloper, will make two passes past the sun, then past another location every loop. So navigating this loop and keeping track of how long it has been and how long remains is a key part of playing the game. At a more gameplay level, each planet is unique and interesting, with most having their own unique gimmick the player must work around if the planet is to give up its secrets. Giant's Deep is mostly ocean, with perilous tornadoes raging and throwing islands into space. You can't land a spaceship on an ocean. Brittle Hollow is being bombarded by its satellite, Hollow's Lantern, and slowly crumbles into the black hole at its center, slowly giving the player less and less ground to work with and closing off areas until the loop restarts. The Hourglass Twins are two planets orbiting each other as they orbit the Sun. As time goes by, sand flows from the Ash Twin to the Ember Twin, revealing locations on the Ash Twin and blocking locations on the Ember Twin. There is also this verticality in most spaces, where things on the surface that are easy to get to point to things that lie beneath the surface of another one of the celestial bodies, and it's these underground locations that hold all the meaty info. Each space is really well thought out and has a bunch of unique areas to explore and consider when running around trying to find solutions to the game's puzzles. Speaking of puzzles, the design. Going into a more micro level, the design of the spaces and puzzles themselves is excellent. To mention it again, it's pretty difficult to explain without spoiling not only the story but the gameplay content, but the way the time loop plays into different parts of the game is amazing and is often combined with the unique conditions of each planet. I will ruin some small things as an example, just so that you get what I'm talking about. So the Hourglass Twins have the sand mechanic, where the sand flows onto the Ember Twin. This means that the caves fill up with sand, and you are at risk of being crushed against the ceiling. There are multiple puzzles that use this sand mechanic to place a timer on when you can do that part of the puzzle. For only a few minutes after the start of the loop, a cave at the bottom of the lake bed on the Ember Twin is accessible. Once inside though, the sand acts as a constant pressure for you to find your way through this maze of rock formations, and then later serves as motivation for this platforming challenge where you need to jump on these rocks as sand flows down this slope, threatening to reset your progress. So not only have the developers made these spaces way more interesting by giving each one its own feature, which also acts as an obstacle to overcome, but they have woven this feature into all of the different facets of the design for each planet. The story. Again, I can't tell you much because it would ruin the game, but the gameplay and the story are so tightly woven, knowing what happens would make playing the game pointless. This is a cool achievement of the game in itself. So much of the story and its motivation for what is occurring in the system is tied to the puzzles you will face and need to overcome. It's expertly crafted, that you couldn't really take the story out of the gameplay and you can't really take the gameplay out of the story. What I will say about the story is, the story is in my opinion, really smart. As you learn things about what's going on, it tells the tales of the Nomai and their travels and ambitions. This ends up being a very interesting and smart explanation for what's going on, and through the writing that gets translated from around the solar system, you see the unfolding spiderweb of stories from a bunch of different characters. And you are constantly uncovering new things through some fantastic level and game design, because there are only a few ways to get information. So you aren't scaring boring things like looking through drawers for letters. You are trying to get to locations where you would then see these massive walls most of the time and you know, okay, this is what I was after. So you can identify info really easily. And after a few hours, you really don't realize just how much you have learned about the world until you sit back and mentally retrace all the different locations you have visited. But if I keep talking about this stuff, I'm eventually going to ruin it. So let's talk about some issues. Right, why might you not like it or for this review, things I didn't like about the Outer Worlds that I fully recognize are a matter of taste. Information and design ambiguity. The biggest problem for me was the ambiguity of all the information. The idea of the game is that you go out and explore, and in doing so, you are 100% self-motivated. You find something, 
you internalize it. You choose to follow the thread somewhere else. From the very first liftoff, this is what the game is all about. You do everything. And this gives a great sense of achievement and pride when you do finally piece something together and work out how to get into that building or that's how you get to that location. It feels good. I did that by using my brain and my smarts. The game does give some prompts for this too without explicitly yelling at you to go here and then go there or dumping a nasty big arrow on your screen. You are told about the astronauts and how you can find them using your sonoscope. You are prompted by this dialogue at the start to at least consider what you will do first. Finding the astronauts on each planet gives some dialogue options to get the juices flowing about the local areas. My problem occurs 10 to 15 hours in, you have exhausted all of your options for following a thread and you hit a massive brick wall. You just can't work out how to do something. You might have a pretty good idea about what to do, but you can't quite work out exactly how to pull it off. At this point, you can either smash your head against the brick wall over and over and over, losing time at the start of every loop having to fly back to the place, or you can look up a guide. And I don't want my games to get to the point where I have to look up a guide. I used a guide for two or three things in this game because I was just too frustrated to continue and otherwise I would have bailed on the game. On top of this, and this could be different for others depending on the order of each bit of info and how it gets revealed, but the entire game I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I had like 80% of the info about everything. This leads to the problem I just mentioned about hitting a brick wall with some parts, but also meant that even up to the point where I finished the game and got the ending that you're supposed to get, I didn't even know what I was doing or what I was supposed to do. I was just doing it because I had worked out that it was possible and it seemed to be the next logical thing. I was actually thinking the opposite. I can, I can do this, but I don't think this is correct because it will break things and I'm out of other things to consider, so I guess I'll give it a crack and then I stumbled on the end of the game. And that doesn't feel real good. Never knowing what you are doing and why things are happening and having to speculate on that last 20% of fuzzy knowledge really soured the fruit salad for me. I felt like I almost got to the end of about five different events and none of them quite wrapped up. The only thing I could suggest for fixing this is having info in there saying this is what happened, but that presents its own design problems and kind of goes against the themes of the game. Or you could have a page that details everything chronologically once you have unlocked everything, so you can arrange the information mentally. Maybe it was just the way that I went through the game. Movement issues. This is a really minor nitpick, but I just wanted to bring it up. Just for reference, I played on an Xbox One. The ship controls are really, really weird, but you get the hang of it after a while. What I never quite got the hang of though was the velocity and the distance. You will smash your ship into planets over and over and over again because the ship won't slow down or the last one you landed on was going away from you and this one is coming towards you. I also think the landing cam at the bottom of the ship will produce more force than the forward or reverse thrusters. Maybe I was just always way too ambitious and should have used the match velocity feature a bit more. What was actually really annoying and wasn't me was the jetpack controls. They seem to do their own thing. Sometimes I would fire the booster you get with your jetpack and it just wouldn't do anything. Sometimes it would work. Sometimes only the standard jetpack and not the booster would fire. I would say be aware of that. It's a pain in the butt. Outside of those couple of things, I think it really comes down to whether you like this type of self-driven game rather than the game itself having problems. Personal opinion. So what did I think? I really like the design and I really like the world. I would lean on the side of it's very good and I liked it, but I spent a lot more time frustrated than I would have liked. And I don't like that the way I played meant none of my suspicions about the plot occurrences were ever confirmed, or maybe I lost the confirmations under the mound of non-linear info you're presented with. I do think these problems mostly come down to me though. It's honestly a very well designed product. I love the worlds and how each one of them has their own thing going on. I did find uncovering all the information and piecing it all together myself very satisfying and rewarding. I found applying my knowledge of the time loop to overcome some of the puzzles was really cool. And I love the scale that the whole system is intertwined into itself. There's a lot to like. Do I think you should buy this game? If you like open-ended sandbox gameplay that is self-driven, this is a very good game. Get it now.
If you like exploration and going wherever you want, and being distracted by something off on the horizon, this game is for you too. It is also on Game Pass, so if you have Xbox Game Pass, I would definitely say you should give it a go for a few hours, because it is very unique, and hey, you have Game Pass, you might as well. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Used to more traditional games with missions and explosions and quest markers, or short on time and you can't justify spending hours repeating a lot of the same content, probably give it a miss. There is an excellent documentary about the making of The Outer Worlds on the Noclip channel if you haven't had enough. I'll link it below. I have a couple more reviews on the channel. Here's one for Days Gone and another for Control. Mostly I talk about game design. So if that sounds fun to you, check out the channel page. Thanks for watching.